Okay, thank this you so much. This meeting is being recorded. Thank you so much. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alameen. Was salatu was salamu ala rasulihi al-kareem wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Amma ba'd, Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli wa jaal li waziran min ahli. Alhamdulillah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this opportunity to gather and uh, to learn some words and some ayahs of Quran. Uh, so basically, I'm going to talk about uh, a surah of Quran, which is very important uh, when looking at uh, its teachings, because they are directly connected to our community, uh, our relations with each other. Uh, this surah basically was revealed in Medina Munawwara. Uh, so this is a Madani surah and all Madani surahs are revealed after Hijrah. Uh, whichever surah is revealed after Hijrah, it is called a Madani surah, even if it is uh, revealed in Makkah Mukarramah. Like some surahs are revealed in uh, Makkah Mukarramah after Hijrah, uh, like the surah which was revealed, like the ayahs, uh, those were, uh, were revealed in uh, Arafat during the Hajjat al-Wada'a, uh, Al-Yawma Akmaltu Lakum Deenakum Wa Akmaltu Alaykum Ni'mati, the famous ayahs. So these ayahs were also revealed in Makkah Mukarramah, but after Hijrah. So we tell, uh, we say that these ayahs are also Madani ayahs because they were revealed after Hijrah. So similarly, Surah Al-Hujurat is a uh, Madani surah, uh, which was revealed after Hijrah. Uh, I will go through the uh, main teachings of uh, this surah. Uh, in short, we are not going to um, take a deep study of this surah. We will focus on the uh, uh, aspects of uh, dealing and uh, ethical values of Muslims, uh, inshallah ta'ala. So uh, in the first, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk uh, about uh, call us. Uh, with the name of Muslims, Ya Ayyuhalladina Amanu, the start of, of the surah, Ya Ayyuhalladina Amanu. So, whenever we hear this uh, phrase in the Quran, we should listen to it very carefully because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking uh, to us directly, not talking to all the people like Ya Ayyuhalnas. Ya Ayyuhalnas is a call for the whole people, for, the, uh, for every person, either he is Muslim or not. But Ya Ayyuhal Ladina Amanu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to us directly, calling us, O Muslims, only uh, the people who believe on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are uh, in the, uh, uh, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to them. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, La tuqaddimu bayna yaday illahi wa rasulihi wa attaqullaha inna allaha sami'un alim. So in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us not to do anything, anything in our life before checking uh, whether Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given some commandments about that thing or not. And if there are some commandments, uh, we should follow them. And if they, they are not, then we are free to do uh, whatever uh, we desire to do. Because if there is some commandment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we are there to follow. We should not uh, go against the uh, commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, in, in Tafasir, uh, I have seen that uh, there is a story behind uh, this ayah uh, and that is uh, narrated by Sayyidina Abdullah bin Zubayr radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said uh, some people from Bani Tamim, they came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was uh, thinking about uh, appointing a person uh, upon them, like to uh, deal with them and uh, to take care of them and to teach them uh, the Islamic uh, beliefs and the uh, Islamic values. So Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, Amir al qaa ibn Ma'bad. So uh, the Prophet, he requested the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to uh, make a point uh, Sayyidina al qaa radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, uh, or the or Prophet of Allah, please appoint Al-Aqra bin Habis radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Then, uh, you know, both of the opinions were, were there uh, in front of the people, uh, in, in front of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
and then they both started arguing with with each other one said uh, you have said a, a different thing from the one i already said uh, until they uh, started like arguing with each other in a bit loud voice so uh, then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this this ayah like uh, as abdullah ibn zubair radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reported allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la tuqaddimu bayna yaday allah wa rasulihi so here clearly we see that if there is a matter uh, uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is going to make a decision on that matter we should wait the decision of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and should not make our decision or try to make our decision the ultimate decision we should not try to feed the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam with, with something so this is the uh, main teaching of this ayah uh, and after the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam like we cannot find the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the life anymore so uh, in, in in this situation we have to uh, look in every matter for the teachings of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and if we find some teachings of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we should find them and we should follow them we should not go against them then uh, we find the next ayah ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la tarfa'u aswatakum fawqa sawti an-nabiy wa la tajharu lahu bil qawli ka jahri ba'dikum li ba'd an tahbata a'malukum wa antum la tash'urun So uh, here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to lower our voices when we talk to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and not uh, uh, talk to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in uh, voices that are loud, uh, similar to uh, these which we use when we talk with, with each other. So when we talk with, with each other in a frank uh, situation, uh, we like do not uh, put the... respect of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in front of us so uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us please when you talk to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is uh, a person who has his value uh, you should not treat him like you treat anybody else so do not uh, raise your volumes uh, your voices when you talk to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this was the teaching Uh, which was given by the by Allah subhanahu wa taala uh, to tell the people to respect the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and there is also a, a story related to this ayah which is very interesting we find one of the sahaba we can we can see how uh, the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to listen to this quran uh, today uh, we listen to the quran and some of us are thinking that this thing was revealed for the sahaba and for others not for me but look in this story how can we feel that the sahaba and the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to think that this quran is revealed for me only not for the other one like uh, thabit bin qais radiyallahu ta'ala anhu this is a uh, companion of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, when this ayah was revealed this sahabi uh, thabit bin qais radiyallahu ta'ala anhu Uh, heard these verses and then he uh, stopped coming over to the mosque to the al masjid al nabawi he stopped going there and uh, was not there in the uh, in the gathering around the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam anymore so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, felt that that person is missing where is he thabit bin qais so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked about him So Sayyidina Anas bin Malik radiyallahu ta'ala anhu said oh prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam a'lamu laka ilma let me go and uh, check what is the problem what's wrong with him and uh, i will come back and tell you then Sayyidina Anas bin Malik radiyallahu ta'ala anhu went to the uh, Thabit bin Qais radiyallahu ta'ala anhu and he found him uh, in a situation like he was thinking uh, that uh, this ayah was revealed because of him because uh, naturally the voice of thabit bin qais radiyallahu ta'ala anhu was a loud voice naturally whenever he uh, used to talk his voice was loud louder than the other people and louder than the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself uh, when he heard this these ayahs he thought that this ayah revealed only about me so when anas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu asked about him asked him asked him 
what is the matter? He said, I am not in a good situation, please. Uh, because one ayah revealed about me and uh, my all good deeds uh, are rejected. And now I am min uh, nar. I am one of the uh, people who will go to the hell. Uh, then Anas uh, came back to the Prophet وسلم, and told him that Thabit bin Qais saying so and so. And the Prophet وسلم, told him, go again to Thabit uh, bin Qais and tell him that he is not from the people of hell. Indeed, he is one of the people who will go to Jannah. So uh, we can feel and we can uh, like uh, see how the people at the time of the Prophet وسلم, and the companions of the Prophet وسلم, used to think that this Quran was revealed only for them. And we also, my brothers, we have to feel that this Quran is revealed for us. The Quran is talking to each of us individually. When we start thinking like this, our life will change. Otherwise, we will stay where we are. We should not think that this ayah is for them, this ayah is for that person, this ayah is for the people who uh, already uh, passed away. We should think that this ayah is revealed only for me and start acting about uh, uh, upon them. Then we should be also very uh, careful about whatever we talk. Uh, because uh, you see how Thabit bin Qais acted upon this ayah and the Prophet وسلم, also warns us about whatever we talk about in al al-Maghrib it happens that a person says a word says a word which is which is very uh, dangerous but he uh, says that word without thinking about it and uh, because of that word he goes down in the hell uh, like uh, the the uh, like the distance between the mashriq and maghrib so uh, this is very important to uh, think about whatever we say and whatever we uh, uh, whatever we talk about uh, uh, sayyidna Muhammad radiallahu ta'ala and asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa nahnu ma'akhadun bima natakallamu bihi ya Rasulullah O oh, oh, Messenger of Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish us because of what we talk also so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said it is because of the tongues that people will go to hell so uh, the hadith said thakilat ka umuka ya Muad wa hal yukabu nasu ala wujihim ujuhim fin nar so because of these tongues, they will go to the hell. We should be very careful about our tongues, what we say with them, what we use them for. And we should uh, also respect the Prophet وسلم, and respect the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and respect the hadith of the Prophet, Prophet uh, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu uh, used to tell people not to raise your voices uh, inside the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One day he found uh, two people talking uh, with each other and arguing with each other in the masjid the Nabawi, in the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu called them and asked them from where are you? They said well, we are from Taif, we have came from, from there. He said, okay, because you are from Taif, you are not from here, I am leaving you. Otherwise, I would have punished you. So uh, this is Umar radiallahu ta'ala and he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, La nabi. Do not raise your volumes uh, in front of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So this ayah also goes for uh, the people who are inside the masjid. So when we go, go to Medina, uh, we should lower our voices in the masjid also. And also, uh, we should lower our voices whenever we uh, listen or hear any saying of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Whenever we listen to a hadith, we should all lower our voices and should uh, surrender to it. Uh, like uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one day he said, uh, 
يأتيه الأمر مما أمرت به أو النهي مما نهيت عنه فيقول لا أدري ما أتانا في كتاب الله اتبعناه يقول it should not happen that a person sits on his uh, like chair and uh, laying down somewhere uh, and some other people come to him and tell him that uh, the Prophet وسلم, ordered that thing and said that thing and that person replies oh I don't know about hadith uh, I only take the Quran so the Prophet وسلم, said no this is not good this is not right because uh, the Quran is wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and similarly the hadith is a wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, the Prophet وسلم, do not say anything anything without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran وَمَا يَمْتِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَىٰ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَىٰ the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not talk uh, with his desire with his desire the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam only talk with the wahi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him tell that thing say that thing and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says it otherwise the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do not say and, and, and do not say anything uh, from his desire uh, then in the uh, next ayahs, we find uh, an ayah uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُنَادُونَكَ مِنْ وَرَاءِ الْحُجُرَاتِ أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ صَبَرُوا حَتَّى تَخْرُجَ إِلَيْهِمْ لَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ uh, In this ayah, we find also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, us to respect the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there is also a story behind this ayah uh, like some people came to uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and wanted to meet him. They wanted to meet the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and when they came to the masjid they found that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not there. He is inside his house like Al-Hujurat that is the houses or, or, the, or the rooms of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So uh, some of them uh, stood up there and started shouting out, Oh Muhammad, Oh Muhammad, Oh Muhammad. So uh, they were calling the Prophet وسلم, to come out of his house. They want to talk to him. So this is, was not a good matter. They, that was not a, a, a right manner. That was a right uh, thing to do. They should have been waited until the Prophet وسلم, uh, himself came out. But uh, they have done the wrong thing. And one of them has said a very bad thing. He said, Ya Rasulullah, inna mal hamdi la zaynun wa inna dhammi la shayn. He said, uh, O oh Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, listen, whenever I tell good about somebody, I am very good at that. And whenever I say bad about somebody, I am also very good about that. So, uh, he, like he was uh, telling the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, listen, if you will not come out, I will say bad about you. And whenever I say bad about somebody, so I am very bad about that. So he was warning the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Astaghfirullah uh, And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied to him, ta'ala. You are saying a thing which is true for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, not for you only. So uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is the one who, uh, who, when he, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala tells good about somebody, he tells it very well. And when, when he punishes someone or he tells bad about someone, he is also very well at that. So then this ayah revealed. Those people who are calling, calling you from behind the house, from behind the rooms, they are uh, mindless. They, they are not thinking about the... Uh, dignity and uh, and the value of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and it it was better for them to wait until the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself goes out. Like Allah subhanahu wa taala for, uh, forgave them because Allah subhanahu wa taala is always forgiving. So these ayahs were also about the uh, respect of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So listen, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us to respect the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is why all the ulama and all the uh, muslihin and all the du'at, they used to uh, dignify the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they used to respect the hadith of the, and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They used to follow it. 
we find all the aima uh, aima uh, the the four aima uh, arba'a those we call imam ahmad imam malik imam Wahlifa. all of them used to say whenever you find a hadith against my opinion so you have to go for the hadith don't go, don't go for go for my opinion because everybody uh, we can take from his uh, words or speech and we can refuse his thinking also except the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we cannot refuse anything from him we, we cannot differ from his opinion we should go with his opinion and we should follow him so uh, this is why we uh, we find the people of uh, uh, of our aslaf and uh, the people who were ulama they used to uh, dignify the sunnah and the hadith also moving forward there is a hadith which uh, tells us to investigate about any news comes to us like in ayah number six allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us yeah you have been amenu in jaya confess you can be the bain for the bay you know and to see the home of media hala for to speak who allah ma fa'al to madame so in this ayah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command us to uh, investigate about the news often it happens a news comes about somebody and depending on that on that news we start thinking about somebody uh, with the wrong manner and after some days we act upon that uh, thing depending on that news and later uh, we come to know that basically that news was wrong and then we regret that we have done the wrong thing for, for, for with that person so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here tells us uh, oh people whenever ya yuladina amanu oh people who believe in jaa akum fasiqun bi nabi fatabayyan whenever a person comes to, to you with a, a news fatabayyanu investigate about it and to see the people with jahalat and to subhu ala ma fa'tu nadimin because you may do something Uh, depending on that wrong news and then you regret that you have done the wrong thing so uh, dears whenever we uh, hear a news we should investigate about it we should not act upon, uh, upon it directly we should uh, like investigate first and become sure that this news is, is right and then we can act upon it uh, upon it and there is also a, a story behind this ayah also that uh, one person was uh, uh, sent by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to bani uh, al mustalib his name was uh, al walid bin uqba ibn abi muayt he was sent by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to collect the zakat from bani al mustalib but that person uh, because he was thinking that uh, that qabila bani mustaliq they are enemies of mine uh, depending on some relations in the past and if i will go to that uh, tribe they may deny giving zakat to me and they may also kill me so he became afraid and came back to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and told him that Uh, oh prophet uh, sallallahu alaihi wasallam i went to them they denied giving zakat to me and also they tried to kill me but later that tribe themselves came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that time the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was getting ready to punish uh, that tribe because they have uh, tried to kill the messenger of the uh, of of, uh, of the messenger of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked them Uh, did you uh, try to kill this person al walid so uh, they said no we, we have been waiting for him but he did not come so we have come ourselves we thought that uh, maybe you are angry on us so that's why we are here then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayah so uh, also my dears the the lesson we get from this ayah is that we should investigate about every news comes to us and we Uh, we should not act directly upon any news which we do not know is it uh, true or not because if we do that 
we may do a wrong thing and then we regret that we have done that thing and in the next ayah ayah number 7 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa alamu anna fikum rasul allah law yuti'ukum fi kathirin min al-amri la'anittum walakinna allah habba ilaykum al-iman wa zayyanahu fi qulubikum wa karraha ilaykum al-kufra wal fusuq wal isyan ulaika hum ar-rashidun fadlan min allah wa ni'mah wallahu alimun hakim so in this ayah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that Uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is there among you if the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam listens to you and accept all of your desires then you will uh, then it will become hard for you to follow uh, all the uh, things you are desiring now like uh, things will become clear with examples like the uh, the people at the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to Uh, obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worship they try to make more and more worship one of uh, one person wants to do more worship more worship uh, and demands that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam give him permission to do more worship but the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam knows that not everybody can do uh, all the worships so uh, he did not order anything about that but the people kept asking the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam why don't we do this like the good thing the, the good uh, worship the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam no it's okay if a person can do he do but uh, others uh, if they cannot do that worship they it's okay for them so it is there in uh, in the hadith sayyidina abu hurairah radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu says uh, one day the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was giving a speech and during the speech he said allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has ordered you to do the pilgrimage the hajj so go for hajj one person said uh, oh the prophet of allah should we do pilgrim, pilgrimage every year should we do it every year the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not say anything he kept silent but the person asked again oh prophet of allah should we do it every year the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam kept silent again the pro- uh, the person asked the third time and at that time the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said laqul law qultu ha la wajabat if i have said yes it would have become compulsory and if the hajj every year becomes compulsory none of you will be able to do it so dharuni ma taraktukum things i do not talk about things i leave please leave them because the people before you was were destroyed because they were asking so much and they were not obeying their prophets so uh, from this ayah and from this hadith we learn that uh, when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was there and uh, the quran was revealing and uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the commandment of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam may uh, change because of uh, some questions from the people at that time it is very bad that a person asks um, uh, keeps ask about something that uh, if the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam makes it compulsory it would have become difficult for all, all the people so uh, and in in our days in our days uh, we should also ask about things that are directly uh, connected to us practical things that are uh, there in our in our lives if we do, if we ask about things that we do not need so uh, islam did, do not appreciate that thing uh, moving forward in the ayahs we find a uh, very important ayah uh, ayah number 9 وان طائفتان من المؤمنين اقتتلوا فاصلحوا بينهما فان بغت احداهما على الاخرى فقاتلوا التي تبغي حتى تفيء الى امر الله فان فاءت فاصلحوا بينهما بالعدل واقسطوا ان الله يحب المقسطين يا الله سبحانه وتعالى سيز وان طائفتان من المؤمنين اقتتلوا اف تو جروبس اوف ذا اوف ذا بيليفرز اوف ذا مومن بيبل اقتتلوا فايت فايت وذ ايتش اذر فاصلحوا بينهما you should make settlement between them فان بغت احداهما على الاخرى if one of them oppress the others 
فَقَاتِلُ الَّتِي تَبْغِي Then you should fight against the one who oppresses until he return to the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ordinance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if it returns, then make settlement between them in uh, justice and act justly. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the, the right way when we find two people or two groups of people or two uh, like parties or uh, two groups, either big or small, fighting with each other. So the Muslims uh, should try to uh, settlement, make settlement between them both. But practically what we see, what we see, we see that uh, those who fight keep fighting and the other people just keep watching that they are fighting. So this is not a uh, right thing. We should uh, like intercede and we should uh, try to make them both uh, calm down and we should make a settlement between them. And here's another situation. When we see that uh, one of uh, the parties is ready uh, to make the settlement, but the other is oppressing the, uh, the others. So, uh, in, in this case, we should fight against him. We should fight, uh, like, fight against that uh, party or that group which is oppressing the other party until he uh, comes back. And when he comes back, then we should uh, make the settlement in a just way. So this is the duty of uh, all of us, my dears, uh, in uh, every day in our lives, uh, in our offices, in our uh, like homes, we we find people uh, fighting with each other because of many different uh, reasons. Uh, so our duty is to uh, tell them and to uh, is to make a settlement between them. We should make a settlement between the people who are fighting with each other until the they uh, come calm down and stop fighting with each other. And in the next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكُمْ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ Muslims are brothers. So you should, you should make settlement between your brothers. And we see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam always uh, like he was trying to make settlement whenever he think about uh, fight, disagreement, clash between two people or two group of people the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to make the settlement even 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 when when the the sahaba uh, used to like say anything uh, or fight with the munafiqeen which the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam knew that uh, abdullah bin ubay he is uh, from the munafiqeen one day uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to Abdullah ibn Ubay and uh, he said a bad thing about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Sahaba started fighting with him. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, uh, please stop, do not fight with each other. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also uh, tried to stop the fight between the Muslims and the Munafiqeen because we, we, we do not clearly, we cannot say that and that person is Munafiq. But, uh, all the Muslims, all the Muslims who, uh, who we see that they are Muslims, uh, we should try to stop their fightings and we should uh, try to make the settlements. Uh, similarly, we see that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one day came to know, came to know that uh, people of Quba, people of Quba, they uh, started fighting with each other, with, with each other until they uh, threw each other with the stones. Then the Prophet Sallallahu said, Qum bina bainahum, and let's go and make the settlement. And the Prophet Sallallahu went there and made the settlement. So Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala uh, command us to make the settlement between the people who are fighting each other in our society. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants our society to be very peaceful, very loving, very caring. 
the Prophet said, "La tabaghu, wa la tahasadu, wa la tadabar, wa kunu ibad Allah ikhwana." So uh, the, the Prophet said, "Do not feel bad about uh, your brother. Do not feel jealous of your brother. Do not leave your uh, brother, and uh, do not cut your relation with your brother. Be brothers." لا يحل لمسلم أن يهجر أخاه فوق ثلاث ليال. It is not allowed or uh, legal for a person, for a Muslim, to uh, cut off his brother more than three nights. So uh, many, many ayahs and many, many ahadith are there. Uh, those are telling us to uh, make settlement between the people who are fighting in our society and to keep uh, good relations. Uh, moving ahead in the ayahs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, tells us not to mock from the others. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, la yaskhar qawmun min qawm, asa an yakunu khayran minhum, wa la nisa'u min nisa'a, asa an yakunu khayran minhum. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us not to mock and laugh at the others. So not the uh, people who are, uh, a group of people should not laugh at, at the other group of people. Similarly, not, not a group of uh, women should laugh at the other group of women because maybe the other group is better than the one who is laughing at. Because uh, we do not know who is better at taqwa. Later in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has made you all from Adam alayhi salam and you are equal. The good among you, the best among you, is the one who has more taqwa. So it is not clear who has more taqwa. Maybe somebody is, has more taqwa because the taqwa is inside the heart. We cannot go inside and look in the heart where is taqwa, how much taqwa is there. So uh, by looking at the face or at the body, we cannot uh, we cannot say about any person that this person has more taqwa. So that's why uh, we should always think about others maybe that person maybe is better than me maybe that person is better than me uh, we should not laugh at each other but we should respect each other not the uh, gents and not the ladies and the ladies uh, mentioned here because uh, some ulama says that uh, it is uh, girls or the ladies who do this more than the men ladies like uh, laugh at the other girls more than the gents and some other ulama says that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the girls or the ladies separately here because Islam uh, is a religion where uh, which teaches us to keep the uh, ladies separate from the male so the male gathering should be separate from the female gatherings uh, it is not uh, like imaginable in the Islamic society that male and female society, male, male and female gathering are uh, sitting both in a uh, place and they are both laughing at uh, uh, an other group of people. So uh, maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the group of ladies or group of females separately. So uh, maybe uh, we are going to stop until here uh, and maybe uh, we can continue these ayahs later so now we have a few minutes if uh, anybody of you has some question he can ask now Jazakumullah khair. Uh, khair, Sheikh. Uh, thank you very much for your very useful and uh, very helpful uh, advice and uh, explanation about uh, Ayas in Surah Surah Hujrat. Thank you very much, Jazakum Lahir. And uh, we have some brothers in Masjid and also how many people are online? So if any questions from the brothers, please uh, you can ask from here. Anyone? Sure. Jazakumullah khairan for uh, the great explanation for Surah Al-Hajurat. 
actually i have a question for uh, the part in uh, which says like وقاتلوا التي تبغي حتى تفير حتى تفيه الى امر الله which means like like fight the one who oppresses the other until it comes back to its normal or like until it becomes fair so who should do that like if it's two person like one person and the other person if both of them are claiming he oppressed me and the other one is like saying he oppressed me and i didn't see only both of them are like fighting to each other and like each one is claiming one of them are lying is lying so in this case what what should we do Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, actually, uh, in this situation, uh, every person has his mind and you can listen to the uh, people and uh, make a judgment according to uh, what you feel that you ask from this party and ask from that party and ask maybe third parties also. Uh, and you can involve those people who were there at the uh, in uh, incident and uh, come to know the reality what, what what it was then you make a decision and act upon uh, upon that decision so if it is related to like an office clash so you can involve your colleagues and ask uh, uh, your managers and ask the the people who were there who are involved in that clash and if the thing is uh, like a family problem then you can involve the family members and if uh, it is a community then uh, you can involve more other people so uh, this clash actually goes up to the to the level of countries as well so if there are two countries fighting with each other and both are muslims then the third muslim uh, country also intercede between them and try to make the settlement so uh, in, regarding your question i think uh, like every person Uh, can make his own decision about the uh, about the both parties depending on the evidences he collects from both of them and uh, when he sees or feels that one is oppressing the other he can go against him brother so i i will ask further so who is authorized to judge between both of them like Like it, between the husband and wife, the Quran says like حكمًا من أهلي وحكمًا من أهلها. So it's like one from his family and one from her family. So that's between the like uh, husband and wife. But if we say like between countries, still we have the problem of like which country should do that. Is it like the world bank or like the world something and which is not a Muslim? Like if it's two Muslim countries, and It's, it's like this kind of, it becomes politics and it's not coming to Islam. So it's, it may be some like a uh, court, which is not Muslim, will be judging between two Muslim countries. No, so, when we talk about, uh, yeah, well, yes, yes, my brother, your, your point is there. Uh, but when we talk about the countries, uh, the other countries who are interceding and making the settlement, Uh, should be Muslims and we should not make the uh, non-Muslim countries uh, like uh, intercede or uh, make the settlement of Muslim countries. Muslim countries uh, should make their own settlements. Uh, so these are basically more wide angles of, the, of, of this thing. But uh, overall, when we look at the, uh, at the Islamic teachings, we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded the Muslims to make their settlements with, among them and between them. Uh, and uh, did not command it, we did not command it to uh, let others intercede or make our settlements. So, uh, so we should make our settlements. We, we can do many things like we can make a committee, uh, including of uh, three, four countries. Uh, and they should make like in the in the justice system uh, we make a committee of maybe three or five judges so in this case we say that uh, uh, and and the the number uh, like should be five or three so if uh, two persons are are going in one side and the other side only there will be only one and if three 
are going in one side, then two will be to the other. And this is how we can make the settlement. This, this is a, a solution. And for every situation, we can make an other solution. But the main thing is we should not like uh, stop uh, interceding or stop uh, making the settlement and keep watching the other fighting. This, this is the most bad thing. We, sh we should not do that. In indeed, we, sh we should like make our effort to make the settlement between both of them. Just to sum up, yeah, you mean like we have to push ourselves to make it good between the two parties, right? So yes, like, I mean are, like yeah. pushing ourselves as a Muslim to make the two brothers or like the two fighting Muslims to become good with each other again or like to, to clear up the situation between them. Yeah, that, that is a point. That, that is the main point that we should not keep silent when we, fight, when, when we find two brothers of us are fighting with each other, we should not keep silent. We should make some effort to stop them and to make them calm down and to make the settlement between them. This is the main thing. Yes, I got it, brother. Thank you very much. Jazakumullah khairan. Any other questions from brothers? Mashallah, uh, I have been to Nishi Kasai maybe, uh, maybe uh, 15 years before. Uh, maybe uh, I was there for Taraweeh prayer. And that time there was only a hall where they started praying Taraweeh. And I think that that was the first time Taraweeh prayer was held in 2007 maybe. But it's good that I have come to know that uh, there is a masjid in Nishi Kasai now. Alhamdulillah. Uh, things are going better. Okay. Uh, Sheikh, thank you very much. And uh, no more questions from brothers. And, uh, okay. and thank you very and much. And Jazakumullah khairan. I am very happy to be with you today. Maybe uh, I have uh, succeeded to teach you something and to remind me, remind myself something good. Jazakumullah khairan. Thank you.